Financial leap year. A similar moment in your financial life that is a permanent upward adjustment in income, which often leads to income set points or growth can naturally occur or it can be manufactured. What we're going to talk about today is financial leap years. <laughs> I've had a few financial leap years. I took a moment to jot them all down. Believe it or not, it's very interesting. Uh, these are points in which my income increased and stabilized. My first financial leap year was joining the military. My second financial leap year was being homeless. That's where a period of fast growth occurred. My third financial leap year starting in sales. My fourth financial leap year starting a business. My fifth financial leap year writing a book. My sixth financial leap year starting a YouTube channel. And my seventh financial leap year creating an online university. If you want to start creating financial leap years in your year, <laughs> if you want to start creating financial leap years in your life, you're going to have to have some shifting set points. Now, what's the set point? Your body has a set point for your weight. That's why you typically fluctuate two to three pounds. Some people may fluctuate three to five. That's your set point. When I joined the military, that was the first time in my life I've ever had that much access to that much money. It was a financial leap year. And there are many people who from rural parts of town, poor neighborhoods who joined, joined the military, and it is upward mobility. However, I also noticed a very interesting trend with people who left the military and they didn't do well once they left. They went back to their default financial set point. I had a friend who was stationed in Hawaii with me. We went to high school together and we kept up and I saw what happened to his life. He got out before I did, he went back home and he resumed his original financial trajectory. I stayed in six and a half years and I was at a point where it was like, are you gonna make this a career or are you gonna get out? I chose to get out, but I had a very good career option. I was able to leave the military go out into the civilian world and get a job based upon my military training. Another part of financial leap years is people are unaware when they happen. Until I started doing this research, in about maybe three years I realized what happened, I just never talked about it, but a financial leap year will set your life on fire or it will set your soul on fire. An upward mobility in class which is something that a lot of people don't want to talk about because we're all equal and all of that good stuff. But the reality is income is a huge part of class. And this is why, and I've said this before, $100,000 per year is middle class. It is not upper middle class. It is middle class income for a single person. Many of the members of the fire movement, once you start to look at who these people are and what they used to do, they were programmers, they were developers, they were people with middle class income that gave them the wherewithal to start putting away crazy amounts of money. I will submit to you right now, if you're poor and you make less than $50,000 a year as a single person, it's gonna be hard for you to experience fire. Also, I have a few other things about this because uh, some people have had financial windfalls a parent may have died or something happened that they don't really discuss for some reason. Everyone likes to say, hey, I did it myself. I'm a self-made person when in many cases there was something atypical that happened that helped them reach their goals. Another part about a financial leap year is they can occur naturally. Mine kind of occurred naturally joining the military. That was a good move. I would say that was natural, but writing a book, starting a YouTube channel, creating an online university. That wasn't natural. That was manufactured. Starting a business was manufactured. And once you start to manufacture your leap year, you're going to make way more traction. You're going to make more money. You're going to experience more success. There are many people here on YouTube and the internet that are selling you stuff that are delaying your success because you're going on this rabbit trail, you're going on that rabbit trail, and by the time you wake up, years have could have passed that if you had actually dedicated yourself 
to a singular pursuit, you would be so far ahead of where you are now because you're no longer chasing rabbits or what I call financial bunny rabbits. These are the promises. These are the lures. This is the seductive methodology that if you take this course or you read this book or you become part of this tribe, that you're going to make incredible amounts of money very quickly. Let me explain something to you. There are many people in these courses, these books, who've experienced financial leap years that they don't really talk about. When I wrote my first book, that changed not the, my only, not my life. That changed the life of my unborn grandchildren. That is how powerful a leap year is, or a, let's say a natural leap year or a manufactured leap year. When you manufacture a leap year, well, let's talk about the money, because this is where people want to, to know. It's like, hey, Glennon, how much money did you make? The business was a great move. I made more money from my book than I did from my business. However, if I didn't have the business, which gave me the experience and the discipline and the intestinal fortitude to write the book, there would have been no book. So the business, which was a financial leap year, a manufacturer financial leap year, was eminently important to writing the book, which created what I like to call the six figure, seven figure set point. Since I have written that book, I've not had a year that I've made less than six or seven figures. That is my natural set point now. That will be my set point for the rest of my life. I want you to understand that. Once you, because the, the leap year, and getting back into explaining it, it is a set point adjustment. There is no going back. Like when I was in the military, I think my first year salary was something like eight or $9,000. And in 1985, that was good money for someone such as myself. I was happy to get it every two weeks. I was like, yes, I'm getting paid. And I saved a lot of money when I was in basic training because you really couldn't spend it in, this, in the PX. That changed me. But once again, that could be a temporary leap year because if you don't continue to push, you don't continue to grow, you're going to have a situation where you're going to regress and you will fall off of your leap year. So we should talk about to create a leap year set point, you need to be at that level for two to five years. I was in the military six and a half years. I got my first car without a co-signer because of first sergeant branch. Hey, buy saving bonds, spend 50 bucks. Their face value was a hundred bucks. That was my down payment on my car. I didn't even have a credit profile at the time. Just to show you that being in the military, having a little exposure, set point my financial life. Then I left the military, went into a job, working in a lab in a recession. I've just noticed other than my period of being homeless, which is a set point, which was, I would say, was probably one of the most pivotal set points. And the reason is, it gave me clarity and it gave me introspection. I had a lot of time. I had to make certain adjustments because there's what the world that teaches us is being successful and there's what's really being successful. I had to discover that many of the things that I was taught were lies. They were straight up lies and they were taught to me for my best interest because once again, if you have skill sets, that work in an environment and you're in that environment, you will be successful. But if you have skill sets that don't work in that environment, you will not be successful. So if you grow up in an environment that rewards what you're doing, you will think that you have just done all this on your own, which is simply not the case. Right now, we have a great many people who are educated, who have degrees, and they're struggling because they only have the educational set point of a, a leap year. I went to college, I got my degree. For some people, more education is a leap year. If you are going to become a doctor, you're gonna become an engineer, you're gonna become an attorney, or you can become a CPA, you go to school, you come out of school, and whatever you study in school, this is your job, that's usually a financial set point. But there are many, many degrees which are financial regression. You will go to school and you will come out less whole than before you went to school because of student loan debts. Part of the set point, which is so important, because what's going to happen is you're going to develop a lifestyle based upon the income you're making. And then this is probably the greatest set point is 
when you move past middle class income, when you get to the point where you're paying cash for the car that you want, not the car that you can pay, because once again, if you're making $50,000 a year, you need a get out, you need a point A to point B car. You don't make enough money to afford car notes. Yes, you can make the car note, but what you spend and what you give up in the future is ridiculous. So once you've maintained your financial leap year for two to four years, many people will just stop because it's comfortable. I, going back to the boarding house, I, I, I started, I already had these seeds of disenfranchisement. It was very, seeds of, going back to the boarding house, the seeds of being disenfranchised were set when I had a job. And I got in that boarding house and that thought of, I want to be paid for what I produce, not for just showing up. Because if I get paid on what I produce, I'm going to make way more money. Even with bad days and so on, I'm going to make more money. So I was already at a point where my mind was open to new concepts and new ideas. And this is why I say being in the boarding house was a rapid period of growth, which set the stage for way more money down the road because it gave me saving habits, it gave me better money management habits, and it gave me a lot of truth. Then I went ahead and exited the storage auction business, wrote that book, and now I've become part of, uh, I guess you could call this another financial leap year. I became a part of the creative class. I'm a YouTuber, and for those of you who want to do YouTube, I'm going to start a new channel, I'm going to start some new courses, but this will be after Money, Income, and Profit because I have figured some stuff out. You can have a small YouTube channel and make more money than most YouTubers. I have someone that I've been working with who has 2.5 million subscribers and they only make $7,000 a month. Now, when I say only, many of you are like, man, I would like to have $93,000 a year. What are you talking about, Glendon? Let's put it this way. With my methodology, which is part of, will probably be the 10th financial leap year, is a certain blend of getting people to persuade people to buy with in videos. It's not a video sales letter. It's much deeper than that. It's a whole different process. But I'll make what she makes in a month. I'll make more than that in a week. And my channel is much smaller. So if I had her traffic with my methodology, I would be making millions per month. Part of the journey and part of financial set points and financial leap years. You got to grow. You cannot remain the same person. You can't, you can't hang around the same people. You go into the barbecue with your friends, it's totally different than you sitting down and talking business with them. You can go to the barbecue, you can go to weddings. You just can't talk business with your original friends. Maybe one or two, but just let that notion go. The biggest part of this is intense, insane personal growth because you can move through life, and I would say the average person has two or three financial leap years. They go to college, they come out, they get married. Marriage can become a fan, finan yes, marriage can be a financial leap year if you marry the right person. It very much so could be. But part of this journey is growth. Because right now, there's a lot of people who are growing, and I see their income is growing. If you've been working on something for two to five years, and your income hasn't changed, you're, you're in the wrong direction. Income is a reflection of growth. That I can't put it to you any plainer than that because if you're growing correctly, if your exposure is correct, you're gonna make more money. You should have your income, and this is how businesses measure their success. They look at same results of two, January 2019, they'll go back to January 2018, it's like, okay, what did we do here? Wow, okay, we grew 10%. Great, that's cool. But if they go back and look at the numbers, it's like, man, we fell off 35%. That business is in trouble. So from a personal standpoint, if you're not growing, whether it's a little bit of growth or a lot of growth, you could be in trouble, a lot of trouble, because we're in this uh, society that changes so quickly that yesterday's skill sets are not gonna get you tomorrow's money. And this is a very hard thing for people to wrap their heads around because for a long time, America stayed the same. What your uncle did in 1975, you could do in 1985 and still make money. Today, the world is nothing like that. I've changed my business model on this YouTube channel five times. 
And that's why I'm still around, because I was looking at some of the people that I used to watch in 2010, 2011, 2012. 90% of them have fallen off. They've, their channels have stopped growing. They've stopped making videos. They're on to different things. But once again, that word, growth. If you're not growing, you're dying. There is no middle ground. There is no static period. So you should seek out growth. So how does one set up a manufactured leap year? Number one, you want to put as much knowledge in your brain on one particular subject. You want to be the person that, hey, we need to, like this commercial with, uh, I think it's Napa, where they go to this guy who's like, hey, what's on aisle six? And he's like, oh, this, 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 and this shelf. But that's what you need to be. One of the greatest lies is internet marketing is that you can make vast financial improvement with little or no effort. Going back to my video where people just wanted to be paid for effort, i.e. just showing up versus results. To experience leap year after leap year, you're going to have to work your butt off. It's not going to happen because, like I said, you can get two or three financial leap years. But if you want to, like, I've had eight. And what I know about income and what I know about people making money, that is fantastical for me to be 52 years old and had eight leap years. Based upon who I am, based upon my age, based upon the region that I grew up in, I should be not, I shouldn't be doing this well. Statistically, I should be dead. Statistically. Because there are so many people in my age group who grew up in that region, that's what's happened. I've seen so many notices of my high school friends passing on due to poor diet, poor health, and a lot of other issues that if they simply ate better and worked out, these things wouldn't happen. But that's a whole nother video. Essentially, you have got to become a robust student of getting results and learning. You got to learn very, very fast. Like, you know, many people, you don't like it, I'll put out a product, and then people's like, hey, I like it, but there's not enough people that like it for me to keep that product going. So I will euthanize it instantly. I will kill it. Uh, a lot of people who are upset that Disruptive Mail went away. And I, I get angry letters about this because people really liked it. But once again, that was another thing. And for that, for anyone watching, any product that's not part of Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills or something new that didn't come onto the horizon until you know, 2018, if you bought some 2017, 2018, that stuff is full effect. But anything before 2017, it's null and void. It's not coming back. It's just not. Just let you know, because we gotta keep this machine moving. But that's pretty much it. You've got to become a person who experiences intense personal growth to continue to have leap years. Because like I said, my set point is six to seven figures. My next leap year is going to solidly put me in a seven figure to eight figure set point. And that, and you know what's really interesting about that? My life is not really going to change that much. It really isn't because where I'm at currently my spending is not going to drastically change. I'm already living in a multi-million dollar neighborhood. I already drive luxury cars that are paid off. I already have a good life. So why would I want to have another financial leap year? It's fun. It's a challenge. It's for personal growth. See, when you start playing the game to play the game to be better versus to play the game for chips, it's a different game. It's, a, it's about legacy. It's about building something. It's about how far can I push myself? How far can I take this thing? Like if you notice, the YouTube's channel has changed. Like I probably won't do any live streams this month. I'm just going to do regular videos. That's a part of growth because someone told me at VidSummit, and I did the testing, and it's true, that live streams for some channels just die. They get to a certain point, they just die. They don't keep going. And this is what I found to be true. So for those two and a half years where I did live streams every day, I retarded the growth of my channel. And this is why I, once again, continue to seek out new information. There's this uh, you, how to do YouTube course, right? And I've seen a lot of people do reviews on it. And none of their channels have any subscribers of note. Uh, Disruptive Mail, I would probably be at 10,000 subscribers in less than a year if I had kept going. They're not 
They're not really growing. They're not getting the subscribers. Because I'm going to tell you something, and we'll talk about this more in the YouTube stuff. Personality reigns supreme on YouTube. Personality. There are some people who just have the right personality or they figured out how to be and it works for YouTube. I don't care about your cameras. I don't care about your setup. I don't care how much money you spend on paid traffic. If you don't have that certain personality, you're just not going to do well on YouTube. You know, I'm not supposed to say that because, you know, people's like, hey, anyone can be sick. No, 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 no. You, not anyone. And there are some people who are super smart and they figure out how to manipulate the algorithm. But to a point, uh, there's some channels that have audited it. It ain't working no more. The best thing you can do is be the best person you can be and grow as much as you can every month and put out the best content you can be. I know someone who does none of YouTube's, any of the YouTube stuff, right? Uh, his name is Matt Delavelle, D-E, D-Delavelle or something like that. But dude went from nothing to over a million subscribers in 18 months. So just, uh, I'll, I'll put a link to his channel around here because some of you may find value. Now, for those of you who need additional help, I have a few programs. And please take heed. I have the Side Hustle Starter Kit. It is a collection of 100 hours of books and older courses that will get your feet wet for you hustling. This could be your leap year. And then for other folks, I have the Hustler H Undergrad Redux, which is 23 courses, which will deepen your knowledge. Now, once again, it's 50 bucks a month for, I think, 18 months or something like that. If you can't afford it, get the Side Hustle Starter Pack, start working, then come back and get H Undergrad. And then for other people, I'm going to start bringing back consults. But the consults are going to be way different way different. They're going to be curated, meaning that you've got to hit some certain set points before we even talk on the phone. But there'll be more about that a little later. And then there's money, income, and profit. There's your basic financial course, which is 125, links below. And then there is investing yourself, which I'm currently building out. There's only one class posted, which you should listen to 10 times if you buy it, because we're going to be talking about how to develop long-term income models. Most of what's on YouTube is predicated on a short-term income model. You can, for free, make 60 to 100K off YouTube, off, and you can do it. But the thing that no one tells you is that these things are going to atrophy, meaning they're gonna fall apart. They're not gonna stay consistent because you're gonna be fighting every month, and what, ha what will happen is you may get into what I call the online hustle trap. You, once you get used to making money this way, everything else pales in comparison. So you will start working harder to keep getting less money because your thing is dissolving and a lot of people are not prepared for that. And we'll talk about that. But the goal of money, income, and profit is to give you the basics about real finance. A lot of the financial advice out there is designed to keep you poor, to keep you broke, and to put you in this misguided notion that you're going to amass all of this money by living like a monk. It simply is not true. Anyone who has a moderate income that gets up to eight to $10 million net worth, there is something special about that person. They've got some unique stock picking. There's something special because once again, based upon the income models, and I can show it to you, I can put a link to you. 72% of this country does not make $50,000 a year, single person income. And the household income, which is two or more people, is only 61,000. That's two people, neither one making 50K, neither one. So once again, when you're, if, you, if you're one of those, I can get it for free, guys, I have this question for you. If you can get it for free, why, it, why isn't this free information benefiting you financially? Because if it was, you wouldn't be watching this channel. So with that, everything's below the, in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video.